Hi everyone, this is Candice Cubito for ScrapBookPal.com with another video for you. I'm going to make a magic color slider card with dies from Lawn Fawn. Now you may wonder what that is, and that is this set of dies right here. Now you still don't know what that is, so let me show you what it does. Here is a magic color slider. It looks like an ordinary black and white set of hedgehogs until I pull the tab right here. Once I pull it, here they are in full color. Aren't they adorable? So stick with me and I'll show you how to make a magic color slider card. I'm going to use this cute stamp set called Sending Hedgehogs. It has a die set to go with it, but I'm not using it today. The first thing I'm going to do is use this die to cut out the hedgehogs. Let me bring in my die cutting machine. I'm not in my usual craft room. I'm up in Syracuse, New York, so I don't have all my materials, but I still have enough to make this card. I need to cut out two panels, one of white cardstock and the other of acetate. One is going to get the full color treatment, and the other one's just going to be black and white, but you'll see. I'll put this machine off to the side and I'll get it back out later. The first thing I'm going to do is stamp the acetate. And because I'm using acetate, I'm going to use Stazon. So I have been practicing with this and I have an idea of where these uh, hedgehogs are going to go. So there they are. I'm getting up my Stazon. Usually, I have to stamp a couple of times, but this worked out very well, and so I just need to stamp one time. And there we go, that's really nice. I'm going to set that aside. I've heard that uh, Stazon can deteriorate clear stamps, so I'm giving them a quick clean before I move on to the next step. By the way, I've taken my Misty mat and I've covered it with clear contact paper, but upside down. So the sticky part is the part that is making my paper adhere to it. It looks a little fuzzy because I patted it with my sweater to take some of the stickiness out. It re works really well, and I'm going to suggest that you give it a try. I cut the contact paper large and I folded it onto the back and taped it. That's why it's staying so well. I've stamped the hedgehogs on my cardstock and I'm also adding a little heart in the words sending hedgehogs and then I'm stamping them on the card panel as well. Now I'm returning to my die set and we'll finish cutting out my designer paper. I'll turn my cutting machine the other way around this time. It's a little easier for me. This die is the outside panel of the slider. Everything else will go inside. This little tab shows you where the front is. I'm not really sure why, but it's there, so I'm going to pay attention to it. You can see that I save pieces of my purple tape to use over and over. The top of my machine is a handy place to keep them. I'll set this panel aside, but I'm going to leave this little piece of tape on to remind me that that's the front of the panel. In looking at the set, you can see that there are three different frames you can use to make the slider. I'm using the rectangle because the others are too small. The other choices are a heart and an oval. I'll use the oval later on. I'm centering the die onto the front of the outside panel. I don't need that stitched piece, so I'll save it for another time. I'm sure I can come up with a use for it. I will fold this in half, and then I'm going to set it aside for right now. Now I'm die cutting two channel pieces that help the slider keep itself even. I've made a slider card with one channel before, but it seems to work better with two, for me anyway. When you make the slider, let me know which way you think is better. I'm using scrap cardstock for this part. 
It really isn't a noticeable part of the card, and I'm all for using up my scraps. I need to cut this slider piece. Again, I'm using a nice piece of scrap cardstock. This is the part that will hide the colored part of the card. And normally, I would cut out at least four of every part of this die set so that I could make several of these cards at once. But for you, I'm just cutting out one of each. The last piece I need to cut is the pull tab, and there are three to choose from. What I like about the one I chose is that it has a little arrow. You may have a stamp set that includes a stamp that says pull me. I don't have one here, but that's okay because the arrow makes it obvious that the recipient needs to pull on the tab. I'm gluing the tab to the slider and I'm going to put it into the pocket. The slider goes into the slit at the top. The trouble I have is that sometimes the slit feels too tight, so I move the slider back and forth several times, even sawing the slit a little on both sides, and that makes the slider move easily. Once I'm satisfied that the slider moves easily, I put it aside and move on to the coloring. The ink has had plenty of time to dry, which is the reason I stamp first. So here are my little hedgehogs. For the bottom part, I'm using two colors, E34 and E11. I'm not a great colorer, so I'll speed this part up. Uh, one of the hedgehogs is male and one is female. The one on the right is the female, and it's been differentiated by having a little eyelash. Hedgehogs are not native to the US. I was in Sweden once to study their elementary school system. I was staying with a friend, and in her bushes in the front of her home was a sweet little hedgehog. I was very excited to see it, and my friend was amused. I don't know, maybe they are about as common as squirrels or rabbits to us. For the prickly part, I'm using E15, and I'm flicking the marker as I go. And then I'm using E34 again uh, for the rest of the top of the prickly part. I'm using R29 for the heart. Then I want to create some grass, so I'm making flicking motions with YG07. I'm also using G14. It's a darker green. I want to shade under the hedgehog and then add it to other places in the grass. And by the way, many years ago, hedgehogs were sold in pet stores. I'm not sure if they're still being sold today. They seem like docile creatures, but I couldn't say for sure. When I put the panel in the pocket, I can see that I don't have the grass going down far enough, so I have a bit more coloring to do. That's looking good, so I'm going to color the sky with BG000, and I'll be right back. Okay, my coloring is done, and now I need to center the panel in the pocket. Many people choose to use tape for this part of the project, but not me. I have found that the glue holds everything together really well, and of course it has the added benefit of giving me the chance to manipulate the card panel. Now I need to put the stamped acetate atop the colored panel. I line it up and then put glue around the other side of the pocket. I line up the acetate once again to put the hedgehogs atop one another and close the pocket. I rub my fingers along the outside of the pocket and when I lift it up, the acetate is adhered to the open side of the pocket. So the next thing I need to do is glue the two channel pieces together. Once they're together, they need to be glued to the colored side of the pocket. You can see that they're very flexible, so I'm able to get them right up against the edges of the pocket. Again, using the glue gives me the opportunity to align the channels. 
Now's the time to put the slider panel in the pocket. Look at that. The panel slides easily and it's a great visual effect. Make sure those little feet of the slider are inside the channel. Using my Gina K Connect glue, uh, I put a thin line of or dots of glue on the channel and close it up. Let me try that one more time. Adorable. I just love it. Now it's time to finish this up. I have an A2 card that I'm going to have open sideways. I also have some coordinating yellow dotted paper that has some wonky lines along the outside that I'll adhere to it. Next, I'll add a lot of my permanent tape to the slider panel and place it atop the card base. For a finishing touch, I add a couple of clouds to the front of the panel. My recipient will think that this is a pretty plain card until she moves the slider to the side. Pretty neat, don't you think? I think the card needs just a touch more. I have this Avery L stamp set called Woodland Wonders and I find a little flower. I stamp it three times with Gina K Amalgam ink, color them, and cut them out with the coordinating die. Now I'm gluing them to the bottom of the slider. I had a little glue stuck on the bottom of the slider and this little detail covers it up. I have another card I made here. Uh, despite the pretty paper and the bright hello on the bottom, the card looks plain with just the small bird on the slider. But when the recipient pulls up the slider, she'll see this adorable full colored scene filling the card front. Well, being in Syracuse, I couldn't resist putting the, the university's colors in, orange and blue. I have two other cards to show you, both using that same Avery Al Woodland Wonders stamp set. This is a smaller card that measures four by three and three quarter inches. You may like this card size better. I do. I think it's more proportional to the size of the slider. Let me show this to you. I didn't put any sentiment on it, but one would fit nicely across the top or even diagonally across the middle. I did something different here. I didn't make this into a card, but you could. I thought this would make a cute gift tag. But here's what's special about it. Notice that it's a fully colored green bunny with a purple tummy. But when you pull up the slider, you see a blue bunny with a different color blue on its tummy. That's because I exchanged the white slider for an acetate one. I stamped the bunny directly onto the clear slider. I turned it over and colored the main part of the bunny yellow and I colored the tummy red. Any child getting this will have fun playing with it. That's why I think that this would make a better tag than a card. It can be removed from the gift bag and used as a fun little toy. Here are my cards and tag. I really enjoyed creating these. Please visit scrapbookpal.com for more ideas. Bye now.